Hi, I feel like I have been on a hiatus, 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 whatever that word is, <laughs> when you take a break and just slow down. I had the beautiful opportunity of traveling a lot of March, most of March, and I cannot tell you how, I cannot overemphasize how important it is for you to be listening to your body. I have the freedom, I have the awareness, I have the tools to be able to nurture my body, manage my emotions, connect to myself, and listen to my body in a way that society, so many different other, like school, so many other places do not really teach you fully. And I, I know so many of you are learning that your emotions are good. You're learning that time's up. You cannot, you can no longer wait on putting yourself last. You're putting yourself first. And so today what I really want to do is I wanted to come on here and just let spirit speak through me and there'll be some stuff unplanned for. But I also wanted to share my story of how I came to do this in the sense of how did I grow up in a very strict religion, three different denominations, by the way. This is not just speaking from one. I have a very big, wide range of experience within the church. I also went to school to become a pastor, but had a spiritual awakening instead. And here I am eight years later, something like that. And I'm running a successful business, but not just that. It's I'm so, 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 so connected to myself in a way that was not taught to me. It was actually untaught to me. So firstly, what I want to say to you is you have this amazing ability to connect to your body and connect to your emotions in a way that you feel safe and in a way that you're not manipulated or controlled, in a way that you can honor yourself and put yourself first. You're, you're always connected to this divine life force energy within you. And also, we are taught through many, many modalities, just society in general, media, movies, um, some schools, some religions. I'm not going to say all. This is not a video to shame or bash religion or church. This is, this is for people who are seeing the illusions inside of it and are also feeling that urge, that connection within themselves of there's something more. There's something more that I haven't been taught. And so you need to know firstly that you have always been connected to this part of you. You have been taught to live as if you're disconnected from it. And so for me, um, grew up with a lot of childhood trauma. I shared a lot about that. You can go through my news feed and like I share a lot because I know many, many people. I would like to say almost everyone has had some sort of trauma unless you grew up as a monk and you literally learned to meditate since birth. <laughs> um, most people have trauma. It's just they're unaware of it, but the symptoms of trauma are there. And it's afraid to be seen, afraid to speak up, thinking that something bad will happen to you, believing that you're not good enough, um, scared to simply be who you are, codependency, people pleasing, um, settling in relationships. Maybe you're a bully yourself and you're belittling your partner or um, you just don't know who you are. All of that, those are symptoms of trauma. And so I myself grew up in that a lot. Um, was very confused of who I am. But I also grew up in this system, I will say, of you have to deny yourself and you'll be saved and you'll go to heaven. And it's very, very confusing because it feels so good. And most people that go to church, most people that find God, um, you already feel broken. You feel broken because of trauma, of something that already happened to you, whether or not you're fully aware of it. You already are living with some piece of you that feels broken. So when someone hands you a solution outside of yourself, it feels so good and it feels like you have all the answers and it feels like it makes sense. But there's still this disconnect. And so these are for people who are feeling that urge. You have this inner voice within you or just this pull. I want you to lean in and I want you to discern from this story that I'm going to share with you today and really discern it and bring it back to your own self, right? Don't even take everything I say as full truth. Like make sure you're listening to yourself. Um, 
But what happens is if, if you have some sort of trauma, and especially if there's generational patterns of belittling, of yelling, of abuse, and then you're taught about God, guess what? Most, of, most people, myself included, see God through the lens of their own trauma, and let me tell you, that is so confusing. Because even though you're doing all the right things, you're following all the right rules, you're still living with this disconnect. You're still asking questions. Something's not, something's not adding up. And your inner being, the part of you that you're always connected to, that's connected to this divine force energy, is like, yeah, there's something else there, and it's trying to get your attention, because your inner being always has you as steady, is that calm, inner knowing that now I'm so excited because I've been connecting back to it for a number of years. I am walking people, clients back to it. And so many other people are realizing, hold up, there's something more to this. And I mean, I grew up believing and being taught that energy is bad, energy does not exist. And now I know energy is, everything is energy. Our organs are energy, cars are energy. Um, everything is vibrational, everything is frequency. Um, and so for me, when I had a lot of trauma exposed to me, I saw things that I should never have seen at a very, very young age. And then I'm taught about God and I have to deny myself and I have to give up all of these things that are me. My desires are evil, my wants are evil. Even like, let's just say it bluntly, Men are the only one that want pleasure. And let me tell you, women want pleasure too. But when you're taught, like, that's bad. You can't have that. And then all of these things, like, start happening within you. You're like, but I have to deny that. And so, so many people are growing up in that. And I did. I did learn to deny myself. And in the process, mixed with all my trauma and unhealthy like a core wound of unworthiness, right? A lot of people are struggling with being confident, being seen. There's a core wound of unworthiness there. So many different ways of how that could be taught to you. But I want you just to reflect. Do you feel worthy? Are you living in your value? Where where are their energy leaks there? But for me, you know, um, what was I saying? I can get off topic here. I was denying myself Okay, I was denying myself, but t being taught that that's how life comes in. That's, that's me being saved, is if I deny myself. And so mixed with trauma, mixed with other patterns, what that can turn into and what it did for me was eating disorder, um, constant, constant stress, waking up with panic attacks, thinking that that was really, really normal. That, I mean... I was 25 years old when I woke up and I was like, oh my goodness, this is what peace feels like. And I had just started really healing and coming back home to myself instead of denying. And so I think to keep it really, really basic for you guys, when you are taught to deny yourself and then there's shame, shame is stories of you're not good enough, you're bad. You have to suffer. You have to give up your desires. Your desires are evil. Or, um, like, I remember somebody in my family attended a Bible study. And they came back and they said to me, Sarah, one of the questions was, what has God given you that you do not deserve and what do you need to give up? That right there is shame. Trauma, trauma, trauma. Fucking with your mindset, okay? And I will tell you that I have people coming to me saying, I think religion gave me my mental illness and I ha there's a part of that that is absolutely true because it is there's such there can be such a manipulative programming and teaching if the pastor or Sunday school teacher is not trauma informed and if someone like myself comes into that aspect with trauma myself and a lot of the teachings will feel like they're manipulative, even with good intention. Okay, so I went through life. I did all the right things. I, I had, like, some really, really good times, okay? It wasn't all bad, you know. There were some really, really good fun times that I have friends in the city now. And, like, I mean, we reflect on them and we laugh because life was good. But there was this also underlining huge, huge stress trauma was still lingering. I had no idea, okay? No idea what was happening to me. I was just doing what I was told. I was following all the rules. I was denying myself. I was doing all the things, but like I would literally go inside a church and feel like I was hollow. 
And then people would say, well, that's Satan trying to attack you. And it's like, no, sometimes it's my inner being going and my intuition going, something is not right here and I don't want to be here. And I get to listen to that now. I get to go into a room, whether it's a church, whether it's a party, whether it's a grocery store. And if something's off, I know how to connect to myself. And I know how to tap into that field of just honoring my body, honoring what my body is saying. Okay. And, but I was just following all the rules because that's what we do. We fall in line. We follow all the rules and we're here to break some of those rules that were never, we were never supposed to fit in. But I'm doing all the rules and I graduated. I got my degree and all amidst, I was still so stressed, so full of emotional inner turmoil, feeling so unworthy, struggling with this anxiety disorder and eating disorder that no one knew about. And just, I was, I looked like a really good girl. I followed all the rules. I had, like, people would be like, you're like, a, you look like a Barbie. You must have everything perfect. And in the inside, I felt like I was literally dying and I was miserable. And most days I was just getting by and I was so, so, so young. Like now that I'm in my thirties, I feel like, what was I going through? You know what I mean? But you just don't know. You take it in as normal. And so if there's anyone watching this, the emotional inner turmoil, the stress, the numbing, the pain that you're feeling, it's time to listen to that. It's not normal to live with that. It's not normal to avoid and deny yourself. That is the exact opposite of how we were meant to live. And I wanna congratulate you and tell you to keep going. If you are, where, wherever you are in your journey, if you're listening and learning to tap into the part of you, that you were always designed to connect to, to live embodied, connected to your body. It will change your life. Stress will no longer be this constant thing. And it's it's phenomenal, the, the, the other way of life beyond it. But um, I got into my early 20s. I did so much traveling. Like this is where nothing was wasted, okay guys? I'm very, very grateful nothing was wasted because the molds that we're told to fit into are also the parts of us that awaken us and that set us free. Anything has the power to limit us and it has the power to set us free. So the same place that was closing in on me that was causing a lot of stress, it also was the place that I broke free of. And it was this beautiful, messy thing that we, I believe we all have to go through in our own timing if we're willing to. And so um, I got into my early 20s. I started writing a book. I started traveling. I, I had people at this church that I was involved with say, you're the leader for all women. And I was like 22, 23. I did not know who I was, but I was writing a book. I was teaching. And let me tell you, it is the most humbling experience to let your earth shatter, let your inner world crumble to pieces. Because I believe now no one, no one has the right to be a leader or teaching unless they, they're actually living it in themselves. And I didn't know that I wasn't. I honestly didn't. I was just following the rules. I was just doing what I was told. And the stress that was inside me the whole time I thought was normal. I thought this was what everyone else had. So I just kept going and kept going and kept going. But I had, I had no idea how to give life to myself. I had no idea how to, what I was teaching to give to myself. I felt so lost and disconnected. But I was teaching and I was this leader and I was speaking on stages and I was writing a book that people were buying and it had a lot of great stuff in it. But was I living it? No. Did I know who I was? No. But here I am in my 20s. And then my world came crumbling down when I was about 23, 24. Had, this is the thing guys, mm -hmm. is when the emotional pain and trauma sit in our body and it builds up, it builds up, it builds up. Sometimes it will turn into actual diseases like autoimmune, chronic pain, even cancer. And for me, it was turning into huge gut issues to the point where um, I couldn't leave my house for months. All my insecurities came rushing up and it's kind of funny because I wrote, wrote this whole book on teaching women to live in their power, teaching women to well, I didn't use that frame of mind because I didn't, I was just still denying myself where that was, you don't have power back then. <laughs> now I know I have power, but it was really like helping people to, helping women to accept themselves and live a life godly to God. And there's a lot of words in there that I don't believe in anymore, by the way, but we're all learning. We're all learning and doing our best. And at that time it was really good. And actually this past weekend I was at um, a hockey tournament 
supporting one of my friends that I ran into a woman that bought my book and it was actually like just such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chat. And, you know, I can't shame or judge myself for where I was. Okay. It, it's a learning experience. But for this, for the sake of this video today, um, my whole world started crumbling down around me and I couldn't leave my house. I was in my last semester of my master's degree in counseling and coaching. I was working full time at a school and it was just so, so, I just couldn't do it anymore. Like my body was like, I'm going to, I'm going to stop. Like you can't keep going. And that burnout, I mean, I was 23 or 24. I had already hit burnout like three times in my life. I was overdoing it. Just the stressed out mentality that I was never good enough unless I did, could never rest until I did something useful. I mean, I don't live that in that anymore. So, so great that, you know, if I need to take three days off and be, do nothing to listen to my body or just meditate, I can do that now. I didn't believe I could do that. I didn't think I was worthy. Crazy, eh? But I know a lot of you are still living in that or trying to get out of it because you know it's just like how. So my world came crumbling down. I'm 23, 24. I'm getting just huge body dysmorphia, huge insecurities, can't even look myself in the mirror, don't even want to leave my house. But I was this amazing girl that had it all together. And it was so hard because it was like, how do I even tell my friends what I'm going through when they've relied on me? And when I've been so codependent, when I've, when I've fixed, when I've thought I fixed all of their problems, <laughs> by the way, we're not here to fix other people big, big learning curve for me to accept that, to go, I have to give to myself what I've been trying to give to others when it was not my place to try to fix them. And so here I am, 23, 24, getting my master's degree, had just launched a book, feeling so lost and couldn't leave my house. And um, I start to get better. But then I think full-time ministry is going to save me. Everyone else is thinking I should be a pastor, and I'm still so tied up in stuff that, and by the way, guys, I was navigating through this basically alone. Like, no one knew I was going through this. Um, and, you know, I think a huge, huge pattern in families and just in culture or friendships is we don't talk about stuff. We see someone in pain, but we're, we're not going to go there. And... The thing too, guys, is what's happening right now is when one person in the family decides to meet their own emotional pain, what's happening is it is showing light to other people in the family of their own wounds, of their own programming, of their own disconnect. And we're learning that like, if you give yourself, if you give your needs, how do I want to say this? How do I want to say this? Um, when you start to meet your emotional pain, when you start to sit with that deep loneliness, when you learn to not avoid yourself anymore and you literally sit with the darkest parts of yourself, you're learning to give yourself your needs that were probably not met in childhood. And then we're bridging this gap of, you're not just gonna send that person flowers. You're not just gonna say, I hope you get well, or I'm thinking of you. You're literally gonna know how to sit in their own pain and be fucking vulnerable because we do not know how, as a society, we know how to people please, but we do not know how to sit in the grieving pain of loss with another person and emotionally be there for someone. We do not know how to do that. We are starting to learn how to do that. And the more you do that for yourself, the more you're gonna bridge these gaps of people that you love that are close to you where it's been like, mm, I see you're in pain, but I'm going to stay over, you're going to stay over there because I just don't, I don't know if that resonates with any of you, but I see it happening a lot with clients when they go back to family gatherings and oh my gosh, because all the work they're doing, it triggers a lot of people. I've seen it in my own life of just when I honor my body, sometimes people in my family are like sub subconsciously going, what the heck? Sarah's sitting down and she's not like doing all the dishes like she normally does. She's honoring her body and they go into like this, like I literally will see them and I love them so much, but it's just, it's part of the programming of, of patterns and thinking that like just so many unhealthy beliefs of unworthiness of we're not enoughness and we're shifting that. We are shifting that so, so, so much and I'm so excited and it's also huge learning curve for a lot of you. So anyways, um, 
I went into ministry and thinking that would save me. I was starting to get better. I could leave my house. My gut issues were definitely better. But it was like I was just, just on the edge of learning to meet my emotional needs. Okay, I'm like 24. I think I'm turning 25 now. I'm in school to become a pastor. And this is what happens. The voice inside of me of saying, there's more for you, was still speaking to me. My inner being connected to life force energy was still speaking to me. It never left me. And as I go now into this, it's like the molds were here with society and school. And now another mold of like, you're not just going to attend church. You're actually going to learn how to become a pastor and teach other people and run your own church. And it was good. It was it started out really well. Beautiful, beautiful people there, okay? Beautiful, beautiful people there. But I'm sitting in class and I'm being taught about Jesus. And then I'm being taught, but you're gonna do this. You can't do this, you're gonna do this. And it was literally like the veil was being lifted for me. Like I was starting this huge awakening of this mold was also breaking me free of seeing things for the first time, of connecting so many dots of questions I had when I was in Sunday school or just questions when I was in school and I'd raise my hand and I'd be like, this doesn't make sense. But then they would give the answer and it made sense. And because you're a child and you're looking up to these people to give you love and to give you support, you think, okay, that makes sense, that's the answer. But I'm sitting there becoming a pastor realizing, first of all, I'm not cut out for this. I don't want to lie to my congregation. This is not, this is not living as Jesus lived. It kind of is. They've got some truth wind in there so that it convinces people. But for me, I'm sitting there and I remember going, I remember looking around the classroom going, does no one else see this? And again, not all church is bad. We, we sometimes need church. I have clients that still go to church. I have an amazing brother and sister-in-law that are pastors, and they're beautiful, beautiful people. But for me, in my journey, I'm sitting there seeing the illusions. And what's beautiful, what's happening is I'm starting to connect deeper, deeper to this part of me and, and God, like never before, like trust beyond measure. Like I am just talking and praying with him going, this is not okay, what is going on? And I started to build this amazing thing that was already inside of me, even though I fully didn't understand it yet because this mold was forcing me in a good, really good way to pray, to connect, to go, God, like, what is going on? I followed all the rules, but this is not okay and I do not wanna be here. My whole inner being was like, this is a hell fucking no for me. No way am I doing this with my life. No way am I following in line with this. Okay, again, I grew up in three denominations. So this is not just coming from one space. This is coming from many different theology backgrounds and many different church backgrounds of experience, okay? And, um, but I was still learning so much there, guys, okay? That's why you need to know nothing is wasted. I learned so much there. And I got to a point though where I was like, I've got to finally tell someone that I cannot stay here. I had, and I was so terrified, okay guys? Like most of you when you're on this journey and you're on this like brink of, you know you're not where you want to be. This inner being part of you is talking to you. You're starting to tune in, you're starting to listen. And then it's like, oh my gosh, but I'm so terrified. If I actually listen, if I actually open that door, what the heck is going to happen? And it's terrifying. And you need to know that that's okay, that that's normal. And you need to walk into that terrifying part. You need to face that fear because when you face that fear, on the other side is everything that you want. Promise you. So I am sitting in this lecture. I'm closing my eyes. I'm connecting with God. And I actually start to visualize this bird messing with my hair this bird and this bird is flying free and I'm, I'm like I want to be this bird this bird is free it's outside of this cage it's outside of these four walls it sees all the beauty of life and it's connected to this life force energy it's connected to God and then my beautiful friend that I had met there she leans over and she's like Sarah 
and at first I was like getting annoyed because I was like, oh my gosh, you're interrupting this flow state that I'm in, this prayer meditation that I'm in. Like, what do you have to tell me? And she's like, Sarah, I think God wants to tell, I think God wants me to tell you that you have wings that you have not flown yet. So let me tell you. The water work started. I started bawling in that class. I had to walk out and I'm like, I have to claim it. I have to claim it out loud to people that I am not, I do not belong here. And I'm going to step for myself. I'm going to step into this trust that I'm feeling within me of God that no one has taught me. And it's so scary, but there's no other way now. Like I was at that point where I was like, I cannot do anything else but listen at this point because everything else before that does not serve me. It's, it's, I feel I'm stuck, I'm lost, I'm disconnected, and time is up. And so um, I want you to just acknowledge that, that the same place that was holding me captive was the same place that freed me. And that, you know, that beautiful, beautiful, like, God is always talking, things are always moving. That person in my class had no idea what was going on in me, and she spoke life into me. And that's why we need each other, guys. Do not hesitate. When those things come in you, do not fucking hesitate. Speak them out loud. Go to that person. Go step out yourself. You see a stranger and something's telling you to say hi or talk to them. You have the ability to open doors that are not taught to you, but your inner being is connected and knows how to open them. Okay? So I'm terrified and I'm walking up these stairs to go tell this pastor that also was a life coach that I do. I was terrified. I have no idea what I'm going to do with my life, but this is not it. And so I get into her room, and let me tell you, I was expecting to be judged. I was expecting to be condemned. I was expecting to say, no, you have to stay, because guess what? That's my, that was part of me that was criticizing myself. Because getting back to the beginning of this big, long story spiel is when you've had trauma, and then you're taught to believe in a God full of, sh of shame stories and shame, like it's just so confusing for some of you, right? I was thinking that if I actually trust myself, if I actually listen to what my body's telling me, I'm going to be judged. I'm going to be condemned. I'm going to be sent to hell. And I am not kidding that there are a lot of people attending church where they're following all the rules and yet they're, they're miserable inside because all of the emotional inner turmoil and the trauma and seeing God through that lens of trauma. There's a different way without the, those filters, okay? And if you want... If you want space, if you want to be guided and coached, join, send me a message to join the Soul Talk Method. The roadmap is there, and I can support you through this. I want to be there for you because, oh, you're on the edge of a journey unlike any other. No one's taught, no one's taught you. It's about guiding you back to you, okay? So I'm terrified. I walk up these stairs. I sit down, and I just, like, bawl, and I feel like decades, years worth of suppressing my emotions was just like rushing out of me. And this beautiful lady, I'll never forget because she did something for me in that moment that I never knew that I deserved, never knew how to give to myself. And as I'm like crying and telling her everything, she goes, Sarah, what do you want for your life? What do you want? You don't have to stay here. And her whole demeanor, her voice, her words, her compassion, her love, her unconditional love for me in that room, in that, in that moment, was just let the rest of the walls fall. Let me tell you, I had no idea what I wanted. And that's okay. Stop waiting so that you're ready or have the answers. It's never been about having the answers. And when religion comes in and tells you these are the answers and these are the only answers and these are the rules and there's nothing outside of that, it's not true. It's never been about having the answers. It's been about trust, radical, radical trust. And a lot of people, myself included, are, were living following all the rules thinking that that's what trust is. And let me tell you, a few years ago, when lockdowns happened, when a lot of things happened, people feared death. People did not know how to trust. And they moved into these confines of, oh my gosh, the rules are breaking. The rules are being tested. How do I live? You must learn to connect with this part of you. This part of you is always speaking to you. This part of you knows how to navigate the fears and the scaredness and whatever the news is projecting this week. 
and it is always, always within you. And so now, eight years later, here I am, and I know nothing has been wasted, but I also am so damn proud of myself for listening, even though I was scared, for demanding more, for learning how to navigate my emotional pain. And I want this for you guys as well. So I went to become a pastor and I had spiritual awakening instead. So what ended up happening is they ended up supporting me. It was this beautiful, beautiful journey. They got me a therapist. They helped me so much. I was so supported by speaking up and by telling my truth, I was so, so supported. And you guys need to know that, that yes, there's always gonna be someone there that wants to criticize you, but when you speak up, there's also gonna be someone, including yourself, that's gonna back you, that is gonna support you, that's gonna be like, we want you to feel safe within yourself again, okay? And so, um, it's kind of funny because where I was, learning to become a pastor, they had this spiritual book about spiritual disciplines. And as soon as I had known I wasn't staying there, I just dove into that book. I dove into that book. I, I practiced, I actually practiced and embodied those spiritual disciplines. Now, let me tell you, if I had stayed in the rest of the busy schedule that they had us in, because let me tell you, most of the, my co, I don't know, they're not coworkers, but people who were training with me, they had us on such a busy schedule. It was so busy. We were busy with sometimes 12 hours a day, eight hours a day solid. A lot of people were not having the time to do the spiritual discipline book, but for me, because I was like, I don't care about anything else, I'm just I'm just focusing on healing and anchoring in the spiritual part of me, the spiritual self that I was tapping into, I literally was in my condo having these experiences with God that I can't even say here because energetically, I do not want to get attacked because there are people in the church that don't believe in energy but then can energetically attack because they're, they could watch this and go, no, Sarah's wrong, and it's, it's a real thing, guys. It's a real thing, and you need to learn about it if you don't believe in it or if you think that that's not a thing. But also, my experiences with God are for me, and I learn very, very fast that once I start to tell details to the wrong people, I'm, it's, it's not received well. Not everyone's ready for it. And I want you to know that this journey is also about protecting your energy. Not everyone has access to you. Not everyone... You don't have to tell everyone your stuff, but I wanna say that I dove into my spiritual side. I went places that church and religion once told me was bad, was dangerous, that I could go to hell for, and it brought me freedom. It brought me fucking freedom. It brought me release. It brought me peace, and it helped me see the illusions for what they are, and I'm living a life that I was taught would be bad, or I was taught that you have to wait until after this life, that you have to suffer because heaven's in the next life. And it's like, guys, the highest form of love you can give yourself is to be present with your inner being. The highest form of love you can have is to connect with your inner being and God force energy in the present moment. And if you're too busy worrying about the rules and what you've got to do tomorrow and that heaven is in the next life, you're going to miss what's right here in front of you right now, right now. I'm full, like right now, I'm full of light. There's the birds, there's the window, there's a mountain. I'm surrounded by such a safe home. I'm gonna connect with that inner being part of me today. I'm gonna live embodied to it. So I wanna rem remind you, I wanna remind you that you are always connected. You're, oh, my hair is doing. <laughs> you are always, always, always connected to this part of you. You have been taught in more ways than not, how to live as if you're disconnected. And so you get your power back by learning to connect with this part of you that's always been with you. And you are going to open doors that you don't even know about. You're gonna have opportunities come in that are always all around you, but you're actually aware and open to them. You are going to see beauty. You are going to learn how you are not, you are not bound by the economy struggles or by one set of rules or by what someone else told you that you're not worthy of, come home to yourself. Religion taught me that I must deny myself and deny my body. And today I'm learning, I'm still learning guys, because it's a journey, but I am anchored in the knowing that God and my body do not need to be denied. They are one and I'm living in that kind of essence instead. And oh my goodness, I, 
<laughs> it is amazing. It is amazing. And it's, it's it available for you in your own way. So will you connect back to yourself? Meet your emotional pain. Meet your trauma so you're not seeing yourself or God through the lens of your trauma anymore. It is so, so wonderful to be in this space. And it's, it's open for you too. So without further ado, I really hope you got something from the story, from me sharing. Take some discernment. Reflect back within you. Where do you need to step out and be brave and speak up for yourself? Where do you need to demand more? Where do you need to be radically honest with yourself? And, 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 and listen to yourself and connect with yourself in this way. And if you want support, if you want guidance on how to do this, connecting back to yourself, regulating your emotions, um, tools, and also just support for unlearning your trauma so that you can fully connect back to the way you see life, to your inner being, not mine, to yours, the Soul Talk Method. I want to invite you inside. So send me a message, chat with me. I'm here for you. And it's available for you too. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.